Thank you so much, Ranjit. Thank you, uh, General Saab. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And the time given to me is half an hour. So I will stick to the time. And it is actually a very uh, short time for uh, discussing such a big topic. So anyway, but I will stick to the time limit. So I do not have a presentation to present. And I will do it in my words and pre present my ideas before uh, all the delegates who are here in this conference. Good morning to everyone. And let me immediately get to the topic. First of all, uh, I would like to say this, that uh, <clears throat> I have actually worked in five continents as a police officer. This was maybe not said in my uh, resume, but anyway, yeah. the, the CV seems to be a little old also. But anyway, um, what I want to say is that after working in five continents, I have actually worked there. I have not gone there for some tourism or some training or something. In five continents, I worked as a police officer in Africa, in uh, Europe, in North America, oh. in uh, Central Asia, okay. and in South Asia. I have worked as a police officer. As a result, I have seen the security scenarios and the crime problems and the crime situation in a major part of the globe, you know, um, most part of the globe, I could say that, that I have seen it, dealt with it, and worked there, as I said. So after seeing this kind of security scenarios all over the world, the concepts of public security, the threats to citizen security, uh, in my experience, I can tell you one thing as of today, if you have to identify one of the biggest threats to public security in today's date and time, then one of the top threats would be cybersecurity for the citizens. That is one of the topmost threats. According to me, it may be number one. But even if you don't agree with that, you must agree with me that in the top one or two would be the threat. Uh, because all of us are cyber uh, area people who have worked in this area, whatever. So uh, it must be clearer to us that it is one of the biggest threats. And in the number one or number two spot, it is that big a threat. It is not a small matter. It is a quite a serious matter. But being human, we are all human beings, you know, so we all live in the real world, uh, this actual world, real world, physical world, this world which surrounds us. We all live in this world. So we are always excited by what happens in this world, threatened by what happens in this world around us, uh, maybe even intimidated, maybe even, you know, worried about what is happening in this actual world, uh, physical world around us. Cyber world people, citizens generally feel is something, you know, very intangible, something, you know, remote and all that. So what is happening there? They don't even feel it's a world. So they don't feel the threat. They don't feel the danger. So that is why the danger becomes even more. When you don't know the danger, when you don't apprehend a danger, when you don't feel the danger, then uh, obviously the danger is more dangerous than when it is already, when you know it, when you're prepared for it, or when you're, you know, uh, attuned for it. So that's why this is very big threat to public security. I feel one of the top most, or according to me, number one threat would be cybersecurity. And in my experience in this field, see, I have been working voluntarily in this field for the last 10 years uh, as a matter of choice. I've never been posted here, whatever the postings were read out about me. Uh, I have never been directly involved uh, or posted in this wing of public security, like cyber cell or cyber crime division or cyber wing. I've never been uh, posted here, but out of my own choice 10 years back, because I like to do new things in new areas. So I started it as an experiment in 2011 maybe now nearly 11 years, when that time I believe most of the police officers had not even heard of the word of cybercrime. That was the situation. Uh, then, see, in 10, 11 years, how big a threat it has become. Anyway, that's a different point. But I've been working in this field for the last 11 years out of my own choice. <clears throat> and as a result, <clears throat> in this experience, I've seen one thing very clearly, that if there is one key that this topic of my talk is the role, the key role of um, uh, cyber uh, awareness in uh, public security. That's what the somewhat the topic is. But according to me, the only key for cyber security for citizens in the cyberspace, it is the only key, friends. It is not the best key or one of the important keys or one, you know, one of the important ways. It is the best way, the only way available according to me, the only tool, the only weapon, the only key that a citizen has to secure his or her security in the cyberspace, it is his or her awareness. There is no other way according to me. And I will try to prove it to you what I am uh, saying now, why I am saying these things. So the only key available to any citizen for his or her security is their own awareness. So uh, that's why I keep telling people, if it is awareness, that is the key. Then what do we have to do? We have to be aware. And how can we be aware? We can be aware by, you know, learning about things, reading about things, knowing about things, discussing things, hearing things, whatever. Knowing the facts, knowing the, uh, you know, the details 
And then after knowing everything and understanding everything and learning everything, then doing something about all those things that you have learned, heard, understood, and discussed. That is awareness. So awareness, according to me, is the only key to ensure anybody's security in the cyberspace. Okay, now I would like to just try to tell you why I said it is one of the biggest threats to public security. In my opinion, see, this, this is from my own experience that I'm trying to share things with you. My own research, my own experience, my own knowledge, and read whatever is my own ideas. So that's what I'm sharing with all of you. So according to me, there may be many reasons for it to be one of the topmost threats to public security. But according to me, I would like to present this fact that I have seen crime all over the world, as I've told you before. I have dealt with all types of crime all over the world. And after seeing all types of crime all over the world and having dealt with all types of crime all over the world, I can tell you one thing. Cyber crime is different from any crime that has ever happened anywhere in the world before. What do I mean by that? Why is it different? And anything, you know, friends, which is different becomes a very difficult proposition to handle, to manage. Anything which is different is very difficult to manage. I'll just give you an example of that just for illustrating what I'm trying to say. Today's era, COVID-19, right? It is pandemic, it is an epidemic which has struck the whole world. It's still going on. It has eased off a bit, but then again, it's picking up. All those things are happening. But what I would like to say is, why is it such a big challenge to, you know, have pandemics and epidemics never come before? Of course they have. In my lifetime, I've seen plenty of them. You know, all of you must have uh, bird flu, swine flu, Ebola, AIDS, what have you, you know, so many pandemics, epidemics came, people uh, predicted the worst, but it never happened. They were managed and everything went on normally. What was there in COVID-19, which made it such a big challenge that the whole world changed, whole humanity came to a standstill. What was it? The fact was, according to me, it was different. This kind of virus, this kind of pandemic had never struck humanity before. A pandemic which changes, it's, uh, which mutates so fast, a pandemic which a uh, virus which affects all the organs of the body in different ways never heard of it a, 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 a kind of a virus which requires different behavior to deal with it masking yourself social distancing maintaining that uh, cleanliness you know washing your hands sanitization what they part of normal human behavior they were not now people are getting used to it and so the things are getting better but was all these this behavior a part of human normal human behavior it was not Similarly, very rapidly changing, very rapidly affecting, coming in waves kind of virus. So all these things combined, it was different. So it became such a big challenge to handle. It's getting better, as I said now, but the whole world has changed. The whole humanity, as I said, has been affected. Similarly, cybercrime, as I said, is a crime which has never, this type of crime has never affected humanity before. That is why the entire security system, you call it law enforcement agencies, the police system, whatever, all over the world, I'm not only talking about my country, all over the world, they are in actually um, uh, confusion. What should we do? What are the procedures we should adopt? Legal, uh, physical, uh, you know, uh, security measures. What should we do to secure people better in the cyberspace? The citizens on their part are also confused. What is the behavior patterns and how should we exist in this space so that we remain secure? So when the systems of security and the citizens also are both in a way confused how to deal with this kind of new challenge, that is why it's combining to become such a big problem. That's why I said anything different is very difficult to deal with. Cybercrime is different. And that is why it is becoming such a big challenge for humanity. Believe me, I have 30 years experience in policing. The systems of policing, which have been developed, maybe variations all over different places, different parts of this country, different parts of the world, minor variations, but basically facts remain the same. You know, doing patrolling, checking of uh, bad characters, of vehicles, of people, of places, um, preventive action against uh, uh, people with record, whatever. These are preventive policing measures which have been developed in and many others like this to um, protect citizens, you know, to uh, ensure security for people in this real world. But do these systems work in a cyber situation? I, I'm sure they don't. And there is no way that you can patrol the cyberspace in an effective manner to give, and for a normal police station, just imagine that, to give uh, security to those eight uh, people in the cyberspace, uh, the citizens existing there. You know, you can keep on developing on it, but fact is that those systems do not match this, this space. That's what I'm saying, it is a different crime which is causing such a big problem. Now, why is it a different crime? Uh, I'd like to just say 
what, what are my opinion on this? Why is it different? Crime is crime. Every crime is same. It has the same procedures, preventive policing. And once it occurs, then detection, then investigation, then prosecution. So it should be the same, no? But it is not. Why? According to me, because it is not a crime of this world, of the real world, actual world, physical world, asli dunya, vastrik dunya, whatever name you give it, this world which is around us. It is a crime of a different world. It's a crime of this world, cyber world, digital world, uh, maybe virtual world, a device-based world. You're born in the real world. We connect to the virtual world. And this, friends, you all know, is also a world, but people don't realize it. The citizens in general, normal citizens, just feel it's an activity. Oh, I'm just talking on the phone. It's an activity. Of course, it's an activity. I'm just chatting on um, WhatsApp. It's just an activity. Of course, it's an activity. But while you're doing these activities, you're using a device. And using the device to perform those activities through that device, you're connecting to a world. As I said, you connect to the virtual world. You're born in the real world. And this too, friends, is also a world. And just like in the real world, it's full of crime, criminals, challenges, dangers, threats, this world, is it not? It is. There are as many in this crime, threats, criminals, dangers, challenges. The only problem is you don't even see them. Till it is too late. Till then, everything is great. You know, it's fun. You can talk to anyone you want. You can download any data. You can see any movie. You can transfer any fund. You can connect to anybody anywhere in the world. Make a network, whatever. Till then, all is fun and games and great convenience and great um, facility. Till something goes wrong. And then the person, the citizen, the concerned keeps on feeling, oh my God, what did I do? I didn't even expect this could happen. But just because you didn't see the danger, the danger was not there. Of course, it was there. The only problem was you didn't see it. And that's why it was too late by the time you saw it and then the crime had been done. In the virtual world, nobody is going to come with a shotgun and kill anyone. But still, people lose their lives and don't even realize it. Blue whale challenge and all that. All of you must have heard about it. Um, threats, this kind of dares and challenges, they keep coming up. And uh, so many innocent children all over the world lost their lives. What were they doing? According to them, they were just playing a game. And the 50th day, they ended up dead. Did they know it? Did they see the danger? They did not. That doesn't mean the danger was not there. As I said, it was there. But they just didn't see it. And as a result, they didn't prepare for it. In the virtual world, again, nobody's going to come with a knife and rob you. But you may be robbed in the worst manner. And then you can keep thinking what happened. Then you can keep trying to solve the crime. Cyber crime does get solved. Of course it does. Who says it doesn't? But could we do that one very important thing for ensuring your own security or as a police officer securing the citizen? Could we do that one thing? Prevention of crime? We could not. Why? Because we didn't see the danger. We didn't see this different crime of a different world. And we were not prepared for it as a result. Something small can happen. And something so serious can happen that our whole lives change. Maybe you people end up even losing their lives for crimes to start in the cyberspace. So that is the problem, I said. Uh, that's why I always say that people, while they are in the virtual world, have to be trained, have to be sensitized, have to be made aware to change their mindsets. The mindsets for the real world friends do not work in the virtual world. And that has to be done consciously. Mindsets can be attitude, behavior, action, reaction, instincts. These are part of mindsets, you know. And these have to be modified consciously. I know it's not that easy that, oh, change your mindset and then go into the virtual world. I know it's not that easy. But just because it is not easy, it does not have to be done. No. Just because it is not it's so easy, it still has to be done because it's a matter of your life and property, life and limb, life and death, maybe. So it has to be done. Just an example. One of the instincts all of us have as human beings, we all have it, even I have it, even you have it, how much ever training we do, how much ever aware we are and how much ever uh, alert we are. Hmm? That is one of the instincts is what you see is what you believe. Hmm? What you hear is what you believe. Because you've seen with your own eyes, you've heard with your own ears, that's why we believe it. And on basis of that, we take an action, reaction in a situation or whatever. Based on what we have seen or what we have heard, it's an instinct because we believe it. Now, suppose this instinct we start putting into this world. Okay, whatever we see or whatever we hear, we start believing and then do some action or reaction. Then what's going to happen? 
Now, obviously, sooner or later, you're going to make a mistake. And that is, that's what I'm talking about. Sooner or later, we'll make a mistake because we believe what we see. And in this world, we can be shown anything, made to hear anything. And then we do something and we get into trouble. That is the basis of most of the cyber crime affecting citizens. That's why I said, as I said before, changing mindsets are very important for safe existence in virtual world for a common citizen. And that is a difficult thing to do, I know, but it has to be done once you become aware, once you become, because awareness, I believe, leads to alertness, and that alertness is what leads to security. And that uh, has to be done and with a conscious effort we have to make. So that is one point. The other point I would like to uh, talk to you about is the role of uh, awareness uh, in ensuring security. Okay. Now, uh, I will start with the, trying to introduce this point uh, in a way uh, that shows what I am uh, trying to ultimately mean. Okay, who is responsible for our security in the virtual world? And like, uh, let's start with that part. Okay, first, who is responsible for your, my, everyone's security in the real world, in this world in which we exist? Who is responsible for our security? First, we ourselves, every citizen is responsible himself or herself for their own security and we take measures from morning to night to keep ourselves secure correct and uh, without anybody telling us without uh, somebody uh, you know uh, jolting us and saying do this we do it naturally because it's part of our system you know nobody has to tell us so when you leave your house you lock your house nobody has to tell you when you cross the road you look left and right again nobody has to prod you when you go uh, to a city you never talk to a stranger when you go anywhere at night you do not enter a deserted alley what are all these things these are very small but they are security measures which we take to keep ourselves secure from morning to night nobody tells us nobody asks us we do it naturally part of our system and like this there's so many thousands of measures which we take to keep ourselves secure so we take measures to keep ourselves ourselves secure our family takes measures to keep us secure our society community takes measures to keep the members secure the police the organization for security it takes uh, makes programs does activities to keep everyone secure the governments makes policies to keep citizens secure there's so many systems so many individuals we ourselves are responsible and are doing things for our security from morning to night in this real world now tell me, as a result of this, all crime is finished, all criminals gone? No. In spite of all these systems, all these individuals, everyone, we ourselves doing things to keep ourselves secure from morning to night, still there are all types of criminals existing and all types of crimes still occur. This is the real world, friends. Now tell me the virtual world. Who is responsible or who takes measures to keep us secure in the real world, in the virtual world? Just think about it. I'm just going to give a few examples to illustrate what I'm trying to say. Facebook, somebody was talking about it uh, some time back. Facebook, many people use that 2.8 billion users of Facebook. That's what Facebook claims. Uh, regular users, daily users, that's what they say. But anyway, so Facebook, everyone, many people use our population of 7.5 billion, 2.8 uh, billion is a large number. You know, it's nearly one third, whatever, one more than that also. So, so many people use Facebook. Every, uh, I also use it. So if I become a 16 year old girl and make a profile, can anyone stop me? Of course not. Is there any authentication, verification? As of today, there is not. So suppose I become a 16 year old girl and make a profile and send anyone of a friend request, especially youth and children uh, are big targets of this kind of targeted cyber crime. Of course, women, senior citizens, uh, professionals, business uh, uh, concerns, there's so many identified and pinpointed attacks. But anyway, so I make a profile, 16 year old girl, send anyone a friend request. What do you see in front of you? You see a 16 year old girl's profile. And what is the first instinct? Belief. What you see is what you believe. So somebody by mistake believes what he or she sees and accepts that friend request. Because they see a 16 year old girl, they don't see me. Anyway, so they, they press this, uh, the friend request. But what I want to say is who presses that accept button? the citizen or the victim himself or herself. I don't go there to threaten that person or to force that person to uh, uh, press that button. Now, uh, another one, another uh, crime, debit card fraud. Somebody gets a call, they try to take the personal information from that person and by mistake, some people give that information. Who gives that information? The victim himself or herself. Another one, suppose I want to control somebody's device, then what do I have to do? I have to send a virus, of course. If I send a virus and write below this that this is a virus, download it, 
Will that person download it? Of course not. So I will send something which that person will download. And along with it, he or she will download my virus, which he or she will never see. He or she will see whatever I want them to see, technologically in part of our crime, cyber crime. Anyway, so I send a virus in some form to somebody and they, by mistake, they press the download button and download that virus into the device. What I want to say is, who presses the button? The victim, again, himself or herself. So I can give you so many examples. What I want to say is this, that if we ourselves are talking to the wrong person and giving all information about us, if we ourselves are downloading uh, the wrong file and putting a virus in a device, if we ourselves are accepting the, friend, the wrong friend request and taking such a big danger on board, then in such situation, who can prevent us from making these mistakes and becoming victim of the most horrendous kind of cyber crime? Is there any system, is there any person, one person who can sit with all the people around the globe who use this uh, virtual world 24 seven and prevent them from doing these mistakes? There is no such person. Is there any system which can come between you and your device and prevent you from doing these mistakes and become a victim of cyber crime? There is no such system. When there is no such system and no such person to protect us and prevent us from doing mistakes and become a victim of cyber crime, then friends, who can uh, protect us and prevent us from doing these mistakes? The answer is very simple. You have got it. It's you yourself. So only you, the person, the citizen, we ourselves can take measures to keep ourselves secure in cyber world. There is no other system. There is no other person as of today. Tomorrow something else might happen. I do not know, but as of today, it's a fact. I'm talking about citizen security. Please do not uh, cons uh, you know, confuse with the cyber war or you know, uh, corporate cyber crime. It's citizen security we're talking about. So it is the citizens who have to take measures to keep themselves secure. There is no other system and no other person. But mistakes are made by them themselves. Maybe by, by mistake, mistake by mistake. But anyway, it's still a mistake. So then when will that person be uh, uh, protect himself or herself? From uh, prevent from making mistakes and then uh, protect them from cyber crime. Again, it's very simple. When they know things, you know, no knowledge is very important. Knowledge, learning, understanding, information. I told you, all these things are very necessary. The person must know it. Then only they can uh, protect themselves. But knowing is not enough. It is knowing and then doing those things. That is awareness. And that is what I'm stressing on. It is not only knowing. People feel that they know things that they know the facts, they have knowledge, they have understanding, so they, they are aware. No, you're not aware. You are knowledgeable, you, are, you know things. Awareness comes when you know those things and you do those things. That is awareness because many people in this country know wearing a helmet is good for their own security when they drive a two-wheeler. Two wearing a mask is good for you when you, for your health security during this pandemic time, but still many people don't wear it. They are knowledgeable, but they're not aware. So then I'm saying awareness means knowing and doing, and that is the only way that a citizen can secure himself or herself in cyberspace. And I've told you there is no other way, there's no other system, there's no other person. It's a matter of things between you and your device. I always say cyber crime for an individual is a crime which happens between a user and his or her device. Nobody can come between you and your device except your own awareness and protect you from cyber crime. So this is very important and knowing and doing also when knowing and doing every time you know i always say security is a habit it's not a choice that you do it sometimes and sometimes you don't you lock the house sometimes and go out and sometimes you leave it open we do it like that we don't do it in the virtual world i've seen because i told you again and again people don't see the threat so sometimes they take some security secure measures and sometimes they don't but that is not security that is zero security because security is a habit, it's not a choice. So you have to know, you have to do, and you have to do every time. Then only you'll be secure in the virtual world. And uh, as I said, awareness is the only key for ensuring your security in the cyber world. I think to a large extent, I try to prove what I have said. Uh, for any citizen, it is a fact. That's all I wanted to say. Uh, I would like to stick to the time, as I said. So thank you so much. Uh, There's so many other things which you can introduce and keep on speaking, but um, I think that's not the right time or the platform. So I limit myself to this. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. And I uh, wish everyone uh, a wonderful conference uh, to come. Thank you so much, Ranjit. And uh, thank you, uh, uh, the entire uh, team of uh, this uh, IASR for this opportunity. Thank you. Have a nice day.